Greetings and welcome to your inspirations. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life, and in this video we're going to take a closer look at the knit top-down pullover. Now this is a terrific introduction to both sweater knitting and raglan shaping. It's super easy to knit in Bernat Velvet. We made it in terracotta rose, but you of course can use the color that you want. And you're going to need anywhere from two to four balls. You'll also need a size US 8 and US 10, that's five millimeter and six millimeter circular knitting needle, 24 inches long, a set of four sizes of US 9, five and a half millimeter and US 10, six millimeter double pointed knitting needles, or of course the size needed to obtain gauge. You're going to need a handful of stitch markers and we're gonna get started and take a look at the raglan shaping. Have you ever knit a raglan before? How did it go? Is this going to be your first sweater? Let us know in the comments below. While you're down there, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff. You can click on those buttons and follow us on all the various social media platforms. And if you want us to see what you're working on, please use hashtag your inspirations. But we're going to start at the very tippy top with the cast on. Now this sweater is marked easy to knit and it certainly is, but I wanna go over setting it up. Now it is knit from the top down and I'm going to work on the smallest size. You can of course use whichever size you want. Now we have the information color coded so that you can easily see what number to choose when you need to choose a number out of a multiple list of numbers. But I also recommend going through and uh, using a pencil and circling the numbers ahead of time that refer to your size because then when you get to that part in the pattern, you don't have to stop and think. So with the larger circular needle cast on, in my case, 36 stitches, but again, whatever number you need. And we're working on the first row on the right side. It says knit one PM and PM stands for place marker. Now I'm using a locking stitch marker because as most of you know, I do both knitting and crochet here on Your Inspirations and the locking stitch markers work better for that. But you can use a ring marker or a piece of scrap thread or a safety pin, whatever you have around will be just fine. Then it's knit two, place marker, knit four in my case, you might be four or six, one, two, three, four, place marker, knit two, one, two, place marker, knit 18 or 20 or 22 or 24, whatever your pattern calls for, Seventeen, eighteen. place marker, knit two, one, two, place marker, knit four or six, one, two, three, four, place marker, knit two, place marker, knit one. So here I have all my markers in place and the reason for them will become abundantly clear as we move forward. Now for the second row and the alternate row, we're just gonna purl across, so I'm gonna do that off camera. And all you do is slip the marker when you come to it. Move it from one needle to the next without doing anything to it. And then we'll get started on some increasing. Now we're moving on to the third row. It says knit one. make one, M1. So to do that, you're going to lift the horizontal bar 
between those two stitches. You're going to lift it onto your left hand needle tip and then you're going to knit it through the back loop. So the legs in the front are crossed and that keeps it from making sort of a gaping hole. So there's my make one increase. Then it says SM, which is slip marker. And it says knit two, one, two, slip marker, make one. Once again, we're going to lift the horizontal bar before the next stitch, we're going to put it on the left hand needle. We're going to knit it through the back loop. Knit four in my case, yours might be six. Make one. There's that lifted bar. Putting it on the left hand needle, knitting it through the back loop. SM slip marker. Knit two, one, two. Slip marker. Make one. There's that horizontal bar. Knit to next marker. And then it says repeat from asterisk. So I'm going to make one. Now, have you noticed that out of habit, I push the make one up closer to the tip? And that is because it is, um, it's a little tight to get it up there when you're engaged. Normally when I'm knitting, I always tell you guys to make sure you get your stitches all the way up on the fat part of the needle so you don't knit too tightly. But for those make one increases, I like to do them closer to the tip just so I have more room to maneuver. Slip marker, knit two, one, two, slip marker, One slip marker, knit two, slip marker. Make one. Knit four or six. One, two, three, four. Make one. Slip marker, knit two, slip marker, make one, and uh, we have done that second, the, the repeat from the asterisk to the asterisk, and it ends with a knit one, which is my one stitch hanging out here at the end. So you can see we put a fair few increases in there. It's starting to get a little bit bigger. So now for the fourth row, I'm gonna purl back and then we're gonna take a look at the fifth row. All right, for the fifth row, we're going to knit to the first marker. Make one. Slip marker. Knit two, slip marker, make one, knit to next marker, Make one, slip marker, knit two,
slip marker, make one, knit to the next marker, which is going to be that big section. And then you'll repeat the instructions that are in the asterisk. Now the other thing I want to point out, let me just put this down so we can see what we're doing. You'll notice that we are increasing in various sections, but not in these twos on either side of the raglan. So see how there's consistently two stitches here, there's consistently two stitches here, and the same thing on the other side. That's just a good piece of information to have in your head, because while you're increasing throughout, if you're seeing those two stitches be consistent, then you know you're on the right track. I'm going to finish the fifth row. I'm going to purl back for the sixth row. And then for the seventh row is exactly the same as the fifth row, which we just looked at. So I'm going to finish my fifth row, do my sixth row, do my seventh row. And then the next thing I want to show you is the cast on for the center front. So I've just completed my seventh row and I'm looking to where it says next row, wrong side. So I'm going to turn the work. It says cast on 16 to 22, depending on the size stitches for the center front. So I could use here, I could use either a knitted on cast on or a cable cast on. I think I want to use knitted on. So I'm going to act like I'm going to knit the stitch. I'm not pushing anything off the left hand needle and I'm going to take that loop and put it on the left hand needle to create a stitch. So that's one. And now I'm going to knit another cast on loop. So act like you're going to knit the stitch. Bring the yarn over and around and draw it through. Do not push anything off the left hand needle. Grab this loop you just made and put it on the left hand needle. Act like you're knitting. Don't push anything off the left hand side. Put it on the left hand needle. So I'm going to keep doing this until I have made 16 stitches for my side. You of course will do the correct number for your side. You could also use a cable cast on here. I just, uh, again, matter of personal preference for me. I like the knitted on cast on for applications like this. Give me a nice neat edge. Okay, and then it says join to begin working in rounds and proceed in rounds as follows. So here's my cast on stitches that I just made and the wrong side of the work is facing me. I'm going to turn this whole ball game around so that the right side is now facing me. And this is why we use circular needles. I now have enough stitches that will go all the way around the circular needle. And now I am set up to work in rounds. The other thing I would suggest you do is mark the beginning of the round. And I like to use a different color. If you can, use a different style or a different color of marker for the round marker, because that way you can uh, know when you're at the beginning of a round. With this many markers on any given row, it's a lot to remember where the round join is. I mean, you can see it here because that's where the split is, but as you get farther away from that, it's nice to have a marker to tell you where the round begins and ends. So my first round after I have joined it to knit in the round is a knit round. Once again, slipping the markers as I come to them. Generally speaking, don't take the markers out unless you're told to. When we want you to take them out, we will let you know in the pattern. All right, here we are. We're all set up. We're working in the round. We have a little more going on in the back of the sweater than we do in the front, but that's just how it's meant to be. I've slipped my beginning of round marker. You find my working yarn here. I'm just going to start the second round. So it's basically what we've been doing, knit to the marker. Make one. Slip the marker, knit two, slip the marker, make one, 
it to the next marker, etc. Okay, let me put this down and talk about the pattern. So you're going to follow along with the pattern as instructed. And again, now that you have it set up, it's really super easy to see what you're going to do. Make sure that you are following the number for your sizes. And again, I entirely re recommend going with a pencil or a pen and um, circling all those so you know what you're doing when you come to them. You want to note that the larger sizes have some extra action going on up here. So again, you may need it, you may not. And then when it's all sizes, we tell you that it's all sizes, knit even, which means no increase and no decrease on the number of stitches you have until the work from the front neck measures that measurement. Then it says divide for sleeves and body. So you're going to knit to the next marker, remove the marker, knit one, slip the next however many stitches onto scrap yarn, removing the marker, cast on two stitches, etc, etc, etc. So what's going to happen here is that you are knitting from the top down. In fact, here's an even better picture of it. So right, so you're starting here, you have a little more knitting in the back than the front. That's where those cast on stitches are. You're going to knit as long as they tell you. You're going to divide the body from the sleeves, work the body as one piece and each sleeve as one piece until you get to the end. So this is a really great sweater to start with if you've never done a top down pullover before and it's super soft and comfortable to wear. So thank you so much for joining me here for the Knit Top Down Pullover. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life. And what is your favorite yarn to knit a sweater in? What is your favorite comfy cozy sweater? Please let us know below. While you're down there, like the video and subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny stuff. You can click on those social media links to follow us on the various social media platforms. And if you want to show us your beautiful velvet sweater, use hashtag Yarnspiration so we can see what you're working on. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.